I'm going to do the puzzle. Can't you introduce you again? That you already know about. It's called Edunopoly. Edunopoly is a game that's high stakes and it's played around the world in many countries, including here in Australia. And I'm going to talk to you about the Australian edition. The Australian edition consists of players. We call them students. They're all individual, passionate, caring, and we need to do something for them. But unfortunately, the game treats them like they're all identical. The same, the same experiences, the same backgrounds. And the parents, the ones that pay for it all, some might pay a lot, some might not pay much at all. But it, interestingly enough, it really doesn't matter in the end because it's all about scores. What scores are we getting in this game that makes us a winner? And it gets better. In 2017, here in Australia, we're going digital with the game. We're going to be able to get them online, like it's going to make a big difference. It never changes the high stakes nature that this game brings. And of course, in 2025, it gets better again. Our government has aimed for us to be in the top five in the world, in limited areas of learning, once again, based on standardisation. What does this really do for a child when they finish the game and they're ready to go? What sort of job are they going to have? Are they going to be passionate learners, passionate about life? Or is something going to stand in their way because they've been masked by a score? What's it going to do with the increase in mental illness in our, in our, our communities? The increase in poverty that some of us aren't even aware of? The child that's, that's compromised in a violent home? What's it, that game going to do for them? It's really, really time that we rethought this game because it just isn't working. This game is about externalisation and we're giving our children the image that learning is about what's on the outside, about that score, about being a winner, about being in front. And at the end, we're really neglecting the most important part of all, the child themselves. We're boxing them in and we're not letting them really shine. Interestingly enough, every three years, we add something to the game called the Australian Early Development Census. Now, interestingly enough, that census that we actually give those children that are just starting the game at age five, some of them aren't even age five, respects the privacy of those children when they're assessed and the privacy of their teachers and their schools. And they use that information to assess the vulnerability of communities and work towards it. However, there's also something else we've discovered in our research. This actual AEDC also can, can, have a, can predict what these children will be achieving in terms of literacy, numeracy and standardised tests even before they start them. And if that's the case, then why are we playing this game? And if that's the case, why are our schools and our teachers constantly being blamed for the lack of those scores? We need to change the game. It takes a brave new teacher to step up and say, enough is enough. And when they do, they experience isolation. They experience the... And they feel like they're alone. And that's where we need our brave new leaders to be supporting them along the way and saying, yes, it's time. It's time we change the game. The wonderful thing about our brave new teachers is they come complete with heart. Within them, they have that get out of jail free card. And they actually use it. And they break free of the game. And they change it. And what they're doing is they're bringing the heart back into education where it truly belongs. The wonderful thing about brave new teachers is they don't have a comfort zone. They don't ever go backwards. They know change happens. They model that change to kids so kids can also accept the fact that the game is never ending. 
And because they are like that, they're the ones that create the shift that we need in the game. There are three things that these teachers do. And you may have seen the work of Keith Abraham, wonderful man. Uh, his books, It Starts With Passion, I really do recommend it. And he talks about where passion starts. It doesn't start with thinking, it starts with feeling. When we have that ability to feel, that's when things can happen. That's the wow moment that we can get in any learning experience. When we're feeling, we use what we call accelerators. Accelerators are sparks of learning that we can use in each and every learning experience. Students can create them. Brave new teachers can create them. We can use multimodal ways of creating them. It could be a video. It could be a TED talk. They could be someone's story. And once we start with the heart and the way something feels, that's when we create that change. And all of a sudden, it actually emphasises the way we think about the situation. And not just that, it creates that momentum to actually act, to do something about it. And it's really exciting to see how that actually works in our classrooms. Even with feeling, we re-look at the three R's, which the game really promotes. Reading, writing, arithmetic. Well, no. We have new three R's. They are real. We want our students to experience real world in everything they do. We want our students to have relevance in what it is that they're actually experiencing. Is this relevant to me? How is it relevant to me? How can I connect to it? And also, the most profound one of all, richness. Is it rich? Am I deepening my learning because you've given me the time to be able to learn? Am I in that flow that we just heard about where I'm able to actually capture that learning? See, a brave new teacher doesn't have lessons. They have learning experiences. They know that their child and that student that they work with needs the time to really get something, and they provide it. They don't have a timetable that's structured and have to have X amount of minutes for reading, X amount of minutes for writing, which the game promotes, because they know they're going to be doing that anyway. They shift the paradigm of what it is to be a teacher and a brave one, and that's what we need. And while this is happening, what, what's happening in our world here in Australia? The government, they're, they're too busy being angry about who's going to be the next leader. And they're hanging on to that government community chest, hanging on to that surplus that they want to achieve. And yet, our education system is at a deficit. So what's the brave new teacher doing? They're preparing our future leaders. They're saying, we don't want a country where this is happening. We want future leaders that lead with passion and compassion. They want these children to rise above and understand what it means to be human, what it means to be whole. This is what our brave new teachers are doing. And they're doing it each day in learning spaces and beyond. The three dimensions of learning is what these teachers focus on. These are the three dimensions that intertwine and make us whole human beings. They focus on offline. Offline is really exciting because it's what's going on in the child's world around them. They don't just develop social skills because it's interesting when we talk about social skills. We talk about putting them in groups and allowing them to be social. No. They know to be social you need to develop the art of reading a person. They know that's where it starts. And even our children with ASD and other issues that they might have, they have to grapple with, start to understand what it does mean to understand others. That is where it really, really starts. And also, there's something else that we haven't mentioned that we need to. We talk about our investment in our learning spaces Fantastic, we need to do that. And our investment in technology, yes, we've got to do that too. But we also need to do something else. We not only have to work on the inside in our schools, we need to get our children on the outside. 
We need to actually connect our children to their community. They need to have a link with their community like they've never seen before. How much investment does your school make in getting them out? It shouldn't be that one excursion and that unit of work that they're having for that term or that semester or that camp for a week. Sure, they're great experiences, but life's not a unit of work. Life continues. By connecting them and getting them out there in their communities, what you're actually doing is empowering them to understand their community in totally different ways. So as they're growing up, they're going to learn to respect their community. They're going to learn by being a member perhaps of Early Act or something that they're passionate about in making a difference and being a social change maker in their own space. And they're going to see their school as part of that space, not a separate entity. And you're going to actually empower those children to understand that they can make the difference in their own community. So when they do grow up, they won't be graffiti. They'll be taking charge of their community and making a difference to it. Also, when we look at online, online's exciting too. We get them online, we connect them to the world, but are they making a difference to the world? The brave new teacher connects them to real life stories. They connect them online to, student, to, to all sorts of things, such as the Deforest Action Project, where kids are in real life time making a difference with our rainforests, our orangutans, and also palm oil and stopping and banning that in their community. These students, the social entrepreneurs, where they're not just going out online, they're creating their own products and selling them online. Now, wouldn't that be amazing for your students to actually do? And this is what they're doing. Maths takes a whole new twist because maths is actually about social justice. They look at the figures and what's out there and it covers measurement and number, percentages. There's so many different things that you can cover in maths just by really connecting and feeling first. And that's how you can really empower them. And then there's also inline. Inline is the most powerful of all. Inline is what's going on on the inside because that's where the power really is. This teacher, this brave new teacher, has self-reflection happening all the time. They don't wait to the end of the session or the lesson. Kids are doing thinking pit stops all the time. They're going up, they're recording, they're doing, they're thinking, and you have got that rich assessment happening that whole time. They're also doing something else. They're allowing these students to have a day every couple of weeks of empowerment, where they choose for that entire day what their learning is going to be about. And they're preparing to meet with their teacher the following day because their teacher is going to run a coach me session with them. They're not going to do a maths a session or a, a, a literacy session with them. They're going to do a coach me session. A coach me session is more powerful because the child is going to talk with the teacher and show the teacher how they're learning holistically. They're going to show the teacher and show themselves by self-reflection socially where are they at in their world and how are they making a difference. Physically, what's happening in their environment and within themselves, are they looking out for themselves? Or does something need to shift because they've realised, hey, I'm tired some of the time. Intellectually, sure, they're still going to look at their skills. But guess what? It's more than just the skills. It's how am I going to keep improving? Culturally is the biggie. That's not just about their background. Culturally is about their belief system because it's the belief system that causes a lot of this to work. So what am I believing in myself as a learner? What am I believing in maths? What am I believing I'm like in English? What am I believing I'm like in life? as a person, and how is that helping me to shift, to change, to move, to grow? This is what these children are doing. And last but not least in that holistic process is emotional. How am I connecting to things? What am I feeling about them? What do I need to change? 
and by looking at it holistically, that's where they set their goals and their passions. And they know that it's not about the end journey. They know it's not about the score. By working with their teacher and working with themselves, they actually see that growth. And it's that growth, that journey, that's the most powerful of all. And no score can ever replace what that looks like for a child. For a teacher, a brave new teacher, it's about personal best. But it's also about new personal best. This brave new teacher allows the child to see and helps them understand what personal best is. What is your personal best in this or that? Whatever it is. What does a new personal best look like? Because often our children don't know that next step. What does it look like for me to go beyond where I'm at now? And if I know what it's like to go beyond that, can you imagine what I can do? And that's what happens when this teacher takes control and says, I am a brave new teacher. I can change this classroom. And it's not a classroom anymore. It's a learning space that goes beyond where I am. And I often think, OK, how many brave new teachers are in this world? Are you a brave new teacher? And if you are, I'll multiply that by 2,000 perhaps students that you might see in the short space of time over the years. And if there's, there's all of you are brave new teachers, if we multiply that, how many students is it that we're going to impact because all of a sudden they're having real, rich, real, relevant learning experiences beyond their classroom and connecting in three ways, online, offline and inline. Imagine the difference that you're going to make. And I hope that I live long enough to see the difference you are going to make, to see those leaders of the future rising up, to have a totally different government which scraps the Edgenopoly game so that once and for all, our children are actually free to be themselves and learn in a world that they deserve. Thank you. <laughs>